explain what does a futurist do? Well, what we do is really when we've just gone through the news now and we try to look at transformation. So what is noise and what is actually transformation? So in our media picture this week, it has been all about our queen not wanting to give uh, the younger son uh, kids the name of princes and princesses. And we haven't seen anything but that. And then you have to go to page three or four to find the future. Uh, so that's really uh, the task of a futurist is to spot which trend are actually having the power to transform the, the way we think, live, behave. I don't know if you remember, but before the pandemic, uh, we had this video going viral with this guy uh, talking to the news and his kids came in and the wife came to pick them up. <laughs> And today we're like, why did we share that? I mean, what's the big deal? Yeah. <laughs> so once the future arrives, we don't even think about it. Uh, but my uh, job is really to to see it beforehand. And and what I really hope is to get in Luxembourg decision makers to be able to spot future trends themselves, because we are living in such turbulent times that it's really dangerous just to let our top uh, politicians to to make uh, to create the future. We all really have to get involved. So if we could get it democratized somehow by by training everybody uh, to see what is noise and what is transformation and what to do about it, then I'll be so happy. Well, well, let's start here. So I'm going to um, just take us back a little bit. You started this work in ninety six, nineteen ninety six. So you've been doing it for a long time. Have things worked out the way you envisaged? Have you predicted things that? have happened? What are your successes and what are the things that didn't work out and that surprised you? Yeah, uh, so so starting with the things that did work out. Uh, so I, I guess it worked for me, but but it wasn't a, a, a good outcome. So in already in 96, I was working in the European Commission, uh, the Forward Studies Think Tank, and we were doing these scenarios for European integration. And in one of the scenarios, we actually predicted Brexit. Oh, my God. And we did, <laughs> we did that because we could see that the UK already then thought, you know, we have our colonies. We don't really be, want to be on the same team as the Germans, you know, the losers of the Second World War. Uh, we have our financial headquarters. And so we were saying, OK, red alert. We, we have this scenario where we're going to lose the Brits unless we make sure that we create this strong European identity, because right now they're in it for the money. So so when we use future scenarios, it's not in order to be right. It's oh really to create a kind of early warning. So I guess we were right in predicting, but uh, we failed in actually doing anything about it. So and and that's so so in that sense, it's, it's not a great example. What I do like is when uh, people are empowered to actually uh, see that they can change the stuff that is going on in Iran right now with the uh, women daring to to throw off their scarf. I guess that's a, a huge transforming uh, trend right now in that part of the world. And, and we will see if it's uh, going to break into other territories as well, like, for instance, uh, fighting for climate, fighting for other things. But we see a kind of activism going on right now, not only in Ukraine, but it's spreading out. So so I think that's really a, a recent trend that I'm following very closely is this, you can call it the TikTok war, the Insta wars going on right now, where people are communicating with each other and uh, <clears throat> they're inter interrupting each other's uh, news broadcast in order to help uh, citizens to, to convey their messages. So we're having these hybrid warfare so uh, in the old days, you know, mm. war was combated by the military. Right now we have the, in this, uh, I'm just working for, for the police in Denmark. You have this situation that the government is saying, okay, here is a lot of money for defense, but they don't actually know where to put the money because what is defense in the future? You know, is it protecting our gas pipes or is it the electricity that we need to protect? Is it the Wi-Fi? You know, uh, do we need drones? Do we need uh, submarine drones to uh, patrol our uh, sub-ocean uh, 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 territory? So, so it's, it's really interesting from a futurist point of view. It really is. Again, you've tapped on so many things there. I wanted to bring it back to your mention of the activism in the TikTok Instagram world where uh, and you mentioned Iran, of course, and everything that's happening there right now. 
one of the things that you really care about is the democratization of these choices and thinking about the future and to be involved in our own decision making. Um, so we do live in a world where we can be active. How do you encourage people to be active in a way that helps and doesn't hinder? I, I think it's when I look at the future, I always say interesting, exciting without uh, being political about it. So I, 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 I'm very curious. So, so for instance, um, uh, you can deep fake videos right now, uh, which is terrible. I think in Germany, uh, there was a woman saying, if I get elected, all cats and dogs uh, should be killed. She was from the environmental party and it wasn't her face. You know, she was being deep faked. Uh, so that's terrible. Uh, but then I downloaded the app and I realized that's fantastic. You know, I can film myself in the afternoon. And then when I go on RTL, you know, I can put this fake video on having perfect makeup, perfect hair um, without having to make an effort, you know, very early in the morning. So, so there are many options in this future. But if you immediately go and you get scared, people have a tendency to, to be double scared compared to what they can get. Without saying interesting, exciting, let me have a look at it. We miss out interesting perspectives. So talking about these women in Iran, uh, I really don't understand why they go on live themselves. What we could do is to deep fake one of the dead girls and allow them to speak again. They are already doing that in Mexico. So you have some journalists who were killed by the mafia and they are being revived. That's so, extraordinary. So we can we can do extraordinary <laughs> things. Yeah. And, and I think... Uh, what an yeah. impact. What an impact that would have if you see some poor girl in this case who has died, who's coming back to life and being revived. Uh, what a powerful message to the people in power. Exactly. So so we can... So, so I think it's... Um, we have never had uh, so many interesting options at our disposal uh, so, so we really need to interact with it and create it rather than binging, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you end up binging, you just watch what everybody else is doing, the hobbies that they are doing, but you don't get involved. So I think, I think that uh, my, my key message here is really for people to start noticing transformation and then engaging with them. You mentioned that uh, you're working with the government in Denmark and they've got a lot of money to put towards defence. But what is defence, you know, cybersecurity, etc. And you're talking about pipelines and everything else that we're seeing in the news right now. So you have to, again, you said you have to spot the transformation versus the noise that's going on at the moment and sort of predict what's going to happen in the future for these very important decisions that have to be made at the highest level. So what's your process? Let's take the example right now that you're working on of defence with this budget that is there to be used. How do you think about studying the trends and the patterns to figure out how it should best be spent, given that we're living in a geopolitical time which is extremely unsteady as well? Well, OK, it's a great question. It will take me a little bit to explain it, but I'll try. We had the agricultural society, then the industrial society, then the information age. And as I see it, we're moving into this age of precision now. And that means that we're getting ex an extreme amount of data. We have artificial intelligence and we have quantum computing coming. And that's going to give us some complete new epiphanies. And that will be magnified and accelerated because we are in energy shortage, we are in money shortage. So we have to make sure that whatever we do, give uh, a max investment. So uh, I'll just give you some, some brief examples. For instance, we're talking a lot about, you were just talking about the university and how is it going. We have data that shows that the most important thing for kids and young people to get higher grades and to do well is the teacher. The teacher is the most important. So if we know that, why don't we, you know, make an impact around that? Or for instance, that if you take your bike to work rather than taking your car, you actually earn the government two euros per kilometer you take your bike because fewer people will go to hospital, fewer people will create pollution, uh, fewer people uh, will get stress. 
Uh, and that's a sort of calculations we're going to get. So if you look at defense again, where can we actually make an impact? We have moved from, I think, uh, one bank robbery uh, a day to one bank robbery a year. You just heard about one coin and the crypto queen. That's where uh, a lot of the, the criminals uh, are, are earning their money right now. We have a whole uh, cyber attack venue going on. So what is important here is to really understand where should we put our energy and how do we also create it in a dynamic way so we don't um, pick the winners too early. Mm -hmm. uh, so for instance, uh, putting all our money into, I don't know, some very expensive drone that uh, when it is supposed to work 10 years from now, we have some drones that are much smarter. It's extraordinary. And just going back to the schools and the importance of the teacher, not only that, but let's think about the curriculum. How ready is the curriculum for tomorrow's society? Again, I think, uh, first of all, uh, we have to learn to learn for the whole life. And if we start looking at data, uh, we're going to shake our heads because the forgetting curve is huge. So when people have a lecture of 45 minutes, they will only remember 2% <laughs> the next day. So already there, uh, we are not really understanding how we work as people. So I'm sure we're going to look back at 2022 and shake our heads and think, God, we were so primitive back then. We didn't even understand that people were extremely dif different from one another. They understood things in very different ways and they needed completely different actions in order to get motivated. We just treated people in the same way. Luckily, we now see, you know, an increasing understanding of diversity. We have young people who have started to do school hacking. So they leave the established system and they pick together the informations and the skills they need. They start practicing in small groups and they develop amazing things. So, so uh, I'm, I'm very hopeful uh, that we are democratizing uh, the power to create this world, that we are seeing some decentralization of knowledge that we can then act upon all of us. When it comes to making choices ourselves and as we move into this precision age, we have certain people who are really eager to learn all the time and really want to be in control of their choices and their lives. And we have, you know, we have a curve. We have some people who, I think, don't don't care so much and they just want to be told what to do. They want an easier life or decisions to be made for them, which I suppose is where our government net comes into play. So how can we think about the whole of society and change behaviours as a whole to improve lives? When I say precision age, it, it doesn't mean that it's a tiny area. It actually is using data to create a much more holistic picture, uh, looking around the whole thing. So for instance, if you say, Lisa, oh, I want to work from home five days a week, my precision data is gonna tell you, uh, or your digital twin, which you're gonna have on top of your head, other people who are doing that, sorry to say, they won't be able to onboard young people. They won't be able to uh, get the knowledge they didn't know. They didn't know they couldn't live without. So they're ending up in a huge feedback crisis. So staying at home uh, all the time is really bad for you. And um, so a, a great example, if you ask a student how they want to live while at university, they all say, oh, I want my own kitchen. I want my own bathroom. But when you see who's getting the higher grades and who's actually hanging on to the university, it's the people who share the kitchen. So, so I think it's very important to stress that we should not sub-optimize by just listening to our inner uh, driving, but, but we really have to design around creating communities and, and caring communities at that. Oh, that, that is so fascinating. That you, I want to give the last word to you, Lisa Lotta, in Denmark, joining us from Copenhagen. Uh, what is your final word before you join us in person next week in Luxembourg? What's my final words? I was I was thinking about the precision age and housing actually. Uh, so, for instance, we should all have our own individualist indoor climates, uh, not too cold and not too warm, and not giving each other the COVID. And then we could turn off the heat wherever we are not in these houses and hall. So I think we're looking into a future where we have to be very clear on what is actually providing value and what is useless. Why should we have cars parked? for 90% of the time rather than uh, mobility, you know. So, so really uh, getting into that. And I think if people start having that mindset of where do we actually have 
an investment in the future that uh, is getting the best out of people and the planet rather than pushing us like lemons, then I think we start all to speak the same language and that's going to be really cool. Well, to all of my guests today, Lisa Lotte in Copenhagen, Kenny from near Glasgow in Scotland, now resident of Luxembourg, to Carol and to Sasha. Of course, you've been listening. Thank there. you. Thank you all. And if you want to join me on Wednesday next week in Luxembourg, you know, I'll be very happy. To uh, absolutely. Wednesday next week in Luxembourg at the British Chamber of Commerce, you'll be giving your talk there and we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Thank you all so much for your time. To all my dear listeners from wherever in the world, you're listening from. I hope we've given you some food for thought for your weekend walk or cycle or anything that gets you out in the outdoors and now saves the government, according to Lisa Lotta, uh, a couple of yours in terms of health and various other things. Um, exactly. And actually in Finland, they have found out and that if you look at green stuff, I mean, trees and forests, it's even better. Oh, absolutely. And they've finally figured out that if you put a few plants in hospitals, it makes you better quicker as well. So there's exactly. so much, which is another reason why I don't want the forests in Luxembourg to disappear anytime soon, because they're just my glorious space for me and my dog at the weekends. I wish you all a fantastic weekend. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.